Shalom to my brothers and sisters in the body of Yahushua Hamash, Hamak. I'm sorry. Shalom to my brothers and sisters in the body of Yahushua Hamashiach. And today is a wonderful day for this is the Sabbath. And I'm coming to you to bring you a word for the Sabbath day. For this is a great mystery that many of my brothers and sisters do not understand my people. So let's get started so we can keep this video short and straight to the point. If you can turn to 1 John chapter 5, for there's a great mystery that many of my brothers and sisters miss in the body of Yahushua Hamashiach. So first, I'm going to start with the chapter summary. And I'm reading from the King James 1611 Bible. And I will put that Bible link in the description box so that so there so you too can study uh, and do further research on this lesson. And I almost forgot the title of the lesson is The Two Rams, the Heaven and the Earth. And I may change the title of this lesson for the video once it's published, but that's what it's going to be about. The, the two parallel worlds, which are the two realms, and they are the heaven and the earth. So let's begin. Chapter 5 summary. He that loveth Yahuwah loveth his children and keep his commandments, which to the faithful are light. And not grievous. Yehoshua is the son of Yahuwah, able to save us and to hear our prayers, which we make for ourselves and for others. Let us begin with verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Yehoshua is the Christ is born of Yahuwah. And every one that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of Yahuwah. And we love Yahuwah and keep his commandments. For this is the love of Yahuwah, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Whatsoever is born of Yahuwah overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Yahushua is the son of Yahuwah. This is he that came by water and blood, even Yahushua HaMashiach, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that bear witness because the spirit is truth. So here, my brothers and sisters, verse six is already giving you a hint about the two realms. For in the earthly realm, Yahushua came by what? Water and blood. And to give us a more carnal representation, not only did he preach the gospel, okay? Not only was he baptized by water and baptized in the Holy Spirit, but even on the cross, when he died on that cross, my people, what did the soldier do? He put a spear and stuck it on his side and out came water and blood. You see, my people, this is how the father tried to try to communicate with you. He give you kind of things here in the earthly realm so you can understand the spiritual things in the heavenly realm. Because, see, most of us are still caught up with the carnal things. In other words, we, we caught up with the tasks of the law. And we cannot see what the law been trying to teach us for so long because we're so caught up with the works of the law. 
But those who come into the body of Yahushua Hamashiach will have a greater understanding of the spiritual things. This is why many do not understand Paul. For we know Paul was great, a great Pharisee, a great lawyer of the law, of the covenant. But yet, when he came into the body of Yahushua Hamashiach, yes, he was baptized and he preached the words and he laid hands on the people and he baptized them in the Holy Spirit. Read the book of Acts as well as the rest of the books of the New Testament. But when you read Paul writing, it's kind of confusing because Paul talks a lot about the spiritual things. And this is why it's hard for you. You have to be born again, my people. To understand the spiritual things. But let's get back to the lesson. So Yahushua Hamasha came by water and blood. So in the earthly realm. We have water. And blood. In the heavenly realm. The water represents the word. And the blood represents the Holy Spirit. Remember how Yahushua Hamasha was made. For the Holy Spirit was the carrier of the word. And she, I'm sorry, and, and the Holy Spirit brought the word to Mary and placed it in her womb. And then the Holy Father did some divine things in that womb to bring him forth. Okay? So, he was born as a man in the flesh, but also he was born in the Holy Spirit. Okay. And then when he became about the age of 30, he went to John the Baptist. Again, give you another kind of representation. He was baptized in water of the earth. Okay. And then after his baptism, immediately the Holy Spirit ascended upon him like a dove and lightning upon him. So he received the full powers of the Holy Spirit. He received the full gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's why he could prophesy. That's why he could preach. That's why he could cast out demons. That's why he could um, lay hands on the sick. Do you see? Let's go on to verse 7. Verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. So to give you understanding of the three witnesses who bear the record in heaven of what Yahushua did is the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And when it said these three are one, what it's telling you is they work on one accord. Just as a man and woman who come together, they're no longer two individual, but they become one. And that means that they work on one accord. They are one unit now for those who don't understand the mystery of the one dealing with the Elohim head. But let us go on. Verse eight. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. So now we're talking about the earthly realm. In the earthly realm, we have the spirit, the water, and the blood. So here's the mystery that many have missed. These two parallel worlds will align together. And you probably say, what you mean, Sister Yidia? Well, remember the old saying, what's done in heaven is also done in earth. What we bind in earth will also be bind in heaven. That's written in the book of John and also I think the book of Matthew. So it's telling you a mystery here. For in the heavenly realm, we have the father who is Yahuwah. So to represent him, in the earth, we have the spirit. Okay. 
Then in the heavenly realm, we have the word, and we know the word is Yahushua HaMashiach in the heavenly realm. And in the earth, he is represented by what? The water. And then we have the Holy Spirit in the heavenly realm, which is represented by the blood here on earth. You must say, whoa, sis, that's, that's kind of deep there. But do we have scriptures to support what you're saying? Yes, we do. So let's 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 get it moving. Let's go to John chapter four, and we're gonna first give you the scriptures dealing with the Father. For in the heaven realm, He is the Father, Yahuwah, and in the earth realm, He is the Spirit. So John chapter four, I'm gonna read verse twenty three to twenty four. But the hour of coming and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Yahuwah is a spirit. Let me say it again, my people. Yahuwah is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So you're probably thinking, how can I worship the Father in spirit and truth when I'm flesh? and blood do you see the mystery i'm about to lead you into for it ties back into salvation and baptism in other words how do you become a child of yahuwah so you can worship him in spirit and in truth let's keep going this is dealing with the father again another precept for you i'm in second corinthians chapter three Verse 17. Now, Yahuwah is that spirit. And where the spirit of Yahuwah is, there is liberty. Let me read this again. Now, Yahuwah is a spirit. So it's confirming. In heaven, he is the father. In the earthly realm, he is the spirit. And where the spirit of Yahuwah is, there's liberty. So he's going to set us free from this bondage that we are in in Esau kingdom. And in Esau kingdom, the chief ruling angel, fallen angel, is Satan. For he have us bound in sin and in death. Okay? So when you understand how Adam fall and what he lost, he lost his dominion of the earth. He lost his, he lost his immortality. For he was a eternal being. Okay. And when he fell, he became flesh. So what Christ did, he brought us back to the status of Adam. In other words, when he come back, we're going to reach to our full status of Adam. And what the father made us to be. And we're going to be set free from this prison that we're in, in this earthly realm. No longer death will rule over us. No longer sin will rule over us. And no longer with Satan and my brother Esau kingdom will rule over us. Let's keep going. Now, this is John chapter 1. This is dealing with the word. For we know the word is Yahushua Hamashiach in the heavens. And in the earth, the word is represented by the word. Then we're going to understand the mystery on that. So we're going to read John chapter 1, starting at verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahuwah, and the word was Yahuwah. Let me read it again. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahuwah, and the word was Yahuwah. The same was in the beginning with Yahuwah. So now we have confirmation of who is let us in Genesis chapter 1. For we know the Holy Spirit was with him, which is confirmed in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. And we know the word was with him in Genesis chapter 1. That is, and they make up the let us. In other words, the Elohim head. So he was with him in the beginning of all the creation. But let us keep going. All things was made by him. And without him was not anything made 
that was made. For more insight on that verse, read Hebrews chapter 1 and chapter 2, my people. Let's keep moving, though. Verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. So the people didn't understand the word when it came in the earth the realm. But let's keep going. Verse 6. There was a man sent from Yahuwah, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of the light. So John was sent to bear witness of the light that was coming into the earthly realm. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Do you see? We didn't even recognize him when he was on the earth. Verse 11, he came unto his own, and his own receiveth not. So my people didn't even receive him. They couldn't even recognize who he was. They were blinded. Verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of Yahuwah, even to them that believe on his name. So you got to believe on his name. You got to believe in the gospel. You got to believe in this word, which is the whole volume of the book. For when you reject Yahushua HaMashiach, you reject becoming a child of Yahuwah. You reject receiving the powers that thy holy father would give to you to batter the enemy. And the enemy is Satan and Esau's kingdom. Do you see what you're rejecting when you reject Yahushua HaMashiach? Well, let's keep going because I want to reread verse 12 to you so you can understand the mystery of salvation and baptism. But as many receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of Yahuwah, even to them that believe on his name. Hint, hint, was not Adam the son of Yahuwah? Let's keep going. Verse 13, which was born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of Yahuwah. This is confirming to you that the sons of Yahuwah will not be born of flesh, not even of blood, not even by the will of man, but of Yahuwah. For it relates to what he was telling Nicodemus in John chapter 3. For you must be born again. That's a spiritual mystery that many do not understand. But let's keep going. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So this is your confirmation of what the prophet Isaiah was trying to tell you, or why he was called Emmanuel, for he was the word. He was the living word. And this word put you in connection with Yahuwah. So that's what they said, that Yahuwah was with us. For the word came out of what? Yahuwah mouth. And it was a living word. And it came in the earthly realm in the flesh to be among us, to give us the Father's word. So we would have life and understanding of these spiritual heavenly things. And that's why he's the only begotten. That's none like him. For he received the full dose of the Holy Spirit. And you can read more about that in Isaiah chapter 11. And I believe it's in Revelation 5 when you talk about the seven eyes of Yahuwah, which is, which is basically telling you about the Holy Spirit, for there's different doses of the Holy Spirit. But he was in the full dose. You can also read in the book of Luke how he grew up in wisdom and in the Spirit. So you can see how these mysteries are coming to play. So I had just proven to you that the word is Yahushua, who came in the flesh in the earth, the realm, and the word is the water. 
So we're going to the next one to prove to you that the word, which is Christ, is the water also. Let me go. Let's go to the next tab. Ephesians. And I'm going to read higher up so you can understand this mystery about salvation. And this mystery of what the word is and how it's represented in the heavenly realm and the earthly realm. Verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Yahushua, so let the wives be subject to their own husbands in everything. So here is giving you an analogy, a comparison, so you can have more understanding of the relationship of Yahushua Hamashia to the church. And we know the church is what? The body of Yahushua, which is the spiritual temple that he built after his resurrection, which also is made up of Israelites slash Jews, Gentiles slash Greeks, males and females and bonds and free. That's what makes up the church, my people, in the body of Yahushua HaMashiach. Let's keep going because it's a deeper mystery here that many miss. Husbands, love your wives even as Yahushua also loved the church and gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So how did Yahushua? sanctify and cleanse the church in other words how did he make the church become holy and clean so they can be accepted by the father for we know none of us can keep the law perfectly for we are flesh so how can we be redeemed and be forgiven of our sins and made holy and clean and acceptable to the father the word it's something about when you hear the word of Yahuwah, it does something to you on the inside. It touches your soul, your spirit within you. And the word is life for the word is your spiritual food for your soul slash spirit. And it will change you. So when you hear this word, which is the seed, that is planted in you, it start to what? Clean you and sanctify you. So that's how the church was cleansed. Let's keep going though. Verse 27, that he might present it to himself as a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So again, how can you become holy without blemish? How can you have not a spot or wrinkle? You got to understand this mystery of salvation and baptism, my people. Let's keep going. So are men to love their wives as their own bodies? He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hate his own flesh, but nourish and cherish it, even as Yahushua HaMashiach, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Yahushua, the Christ, and the church. So in order to understand the mystery of the relationship that Christ has to the church, which is the body of Yahushua HaMashiach, you got to understand the mystery of marriage, my people. Even in Genesis, it said when a man and woman cleave, they when they cleave together, they leave their family and they become one. But we know there's two bodies. And when we see them, we see two people, but they become one. Have you noticed with a married couple who are in Yahuwah and believe in Yahushua Hamasha that they work together and that they know each other so well that they already know what the other one is thinking. They already know what the other one wants and how they like it. And they work together on the same accord 
in the body of Yahushua Hamashiach. This would give you understanding of the Elohim head in Genesis chapter 1. And also it's mentioned in Acts, I believe, chapter 17. When you see that they are one, it means they work on one accord. They are spiritually interlocked. They are spiritually connected. So I just proven to you in the heavenly realm, the word is Yahushua. And in the earthly realm, the word is represented by water because when you get in water, it, it removes the dirt. It removes that filthiness to make you clean, holy, and acceptable. Do you see how the Father works? He always gives you a kind of representation so you can understand these spiritual things. But let's keep going so you can understand the mystery of marriage. Now, we know Christ is married to the body of Yehushua Hamashiach, which is the church, the spiritual temple. But did you know the same thing was done to the nation of Israel? And I'm going to keep this lesson short by giving the most key prime verse, but it's also confirmed in Hosea chapter 2. But this is Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 14. It said, Turn, O backsliding children, saith Yehuah, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family. And I will bring you to Zion. Yahuwah is married to the nation of Israel. That's a mystery behind that. For those who want to know more about this mystery, if you have access to the King James 1611 or the Apocrypha, I highly recommend that you read Ben Sarah chapter 24, which is also known as Ecclesiasticus. Read that chapter. And see how the father is married unto the nation of Israel. And let me go to one more chapter for you. I believe it's in Chronicles. Let me find it. I mean, yeah, Corinthians, not Chronicles. Sorry about that. Corinthians. Let's see here. I'm going to do a search. Wait a minute. Bear with me, my family, because I have to get it. When the Most High brings something to my mind, he's letting me know that I need to tell you this so you can understand how we are married to Yahushua. And I know it's in the book of Corinthians. And I do apologize. I, I try to have my stuff, you know, organized for you so we can get straight to the point. And so this video won't be long. Here we go. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. So he's telling me I need to read this to you so you will have understanding of how he's married to us. And to keep this lesson short, I will read... Started at verse 9, okay? But I do um, highly recommend that you read this whole chapter. So we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and I'll start reading at verse 9. Know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit, I'm sorry, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahuwah? Be not deceived, not of fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor junkets, nor revelators, I'm saying revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Yahuwah. And such was some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of Yahushua Hamasha and by the spirit of our Yahuwah. So that's a important piece right there. This is how we are justified. For we know we are flesh and we know we can't keep the whole law perfectly as commanded. So what justify you? You have to receive salvation and baptism. And baptism is both my people, water and spiritual. Okay, let us keep going. Verse 12. 
All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I would not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. But Yahuwah shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for Yahuwah, and the master for the body. And Yahuwah had both raised up Yahushua, and will also raise us up, and will also raise up us by his own power. And this is something very important. The Antichrist would not have the gift of bringing the person back from the dead. It's very important that you study um, who Christ is and the signs that Christ has and his powers and what he'd be able to do because the Antichrist would not be able to bring no one back from the dead. It's very important because he will deceive the whole world greatly with his um, so-called miracles and powers. But let us keep going and get back on task in this lesson. Verse 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Yahushua? Shall I then take the members of Yahushua and make them the members of a harlot? Yahuwah forbid. So you see now, once we come into the body of Yahushua Hamashiach, we got to keep the commandments. And for those who understand the New Testament, you're not going to stand the commandments unless you read the old testament and for example did not christ come in the whole volume of the book did not christ talk about the covenant so to understand christ you got to understand the whole testament so you know what things he changed of the covenant and you know what things that we are covered by christ when we cannot fulfill the covenant that's a lot of spiritual mysteries that many are missing because some are staying too much in the new testament Others are staying too much in the Old Testament, but you're supposed to stay in the whole volume of the book to see the bigger picture. Let's keep going. Verse 16. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, say if he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto Yahushua, or I can say he that is joined unto Yahuwah is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man do is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of Yahuwah, and ye are not of your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify Yahuwah in your body and in your spirit, which are Yahuwah's. So we are bought with a price, my people. In order to be set free from this bondage we are in, the price was the price of blood. And I want you to do a word search on blood in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament to understand what Christ did. He paid the price with his blood. OK, so this is why the word should be free for all. No one should be charging you for the word for Christ ought to pay the price so you can receive the word. You understand, my brothers and sisters in this body? Also, when we come into the body of Christ, we don't belong to Satan. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to the Holy Father now. So we have to live a holy, set apart life from this world. We can't do what the world do, my people. This is why it's important for you to study the commandments. Okay? And I highly recommend that you start with, I call it the Ten Commandments. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Also read Deuteronomy chapter 6. And read um, Matthew chapter 22. And I also know it's in Luke. I want to say Luke chapter 10. So, so you can understand what I mean by the 12 commandments. Because there's two great commandments. That is the foundation of all of the 600, 613 commandments. But especially of the 10. So in other words, if you love Yahuwah, will you serve other gods? No. If you love your neighbor as yourself, will you steal your neighbor's possessions? No. Will you kill your neighbor? No. Will you um commit adultery with your neighbor wife? No. If you if you love your who, will you commit fornication with serving other gods or worshiping other idols? No. Will you commit fornication in the flesh by sleeping with, you know, with people? No. So this is why it's so important to start with I say the 12 commandments and then so to progress and learn the other commandments and then study those commandments with the gospel and see what Christ said on what you're supposed to do because there were some changes 
But let's keep moving to keep this lesson to the point. So uh, the next proof that I have for you that Yahushua is the word, there's another analogy for the word besides water, and that is fire. So let me read to you Mark chapter 9, verse 49. For everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. For those who understand Torah, you know that for your meat offering, I'm talking about grain offering, your bread, you who do require you to put some salt so it can have some flavor. For you know without salt, there is no flavor. That's the same thing with the children of Yahuwah. If you don't have the word dwelling within you, if you don't know the word or study the word, then you have no flavor. You have no salt. Then how, then how can you be a light in this world of darkness? Let us keep going. Verse 50. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. And you can read this in, in the old, I mean, in the Torah, which is the Old Testament in Leviticus chapter 2, verse 13 for further understanding with the carnal meaning. Okay. Also, we'll go to Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, because this will prove that the word is represented by water and fire. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. What? Now, this is John the Baptist. John the Baptist talking, saying that Yahushua shall baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And those who had a spiritual encounter of this, and I'm a witness of this, I'm telling y'all, when the word is in you and you've been anointed to preach and that anointing is being baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's like fire shut up in your bone. You cannot keep it to yourself. You have to preach. You have to get it out. You have to let the people know. So this word is water and it's fire. And the word is also salt, which would give you the flavor. Do you see how the two rams are, are, are connecting together? Do you see how the parallel worlds are aligning to one another? So what's done in heaven is also done in earth. Let us keep going. Ephesians chapter one. Now, this is what's going to tie in the Holy Spirit. So for my base, I really for you need to seek you who are on this so you can get the full understanding and read Luke chapter. I believe it's Luke chapter 11, 9 to 13. If not, I would post a comment to make sure but i believe it's luke chapter 11 verse 9 to 13 you have to treat seek the father to really understand these mysteries so this is dealing with the holy spirit now in the heavenly realm we have the holy spirit in the earthly realm to represent the holy spirit is the blood so the first proof i have for you is in ephesians chapter one but i would like to read a summary to you so your spare time you can also study that chapter as well after the south salutation and the thanksgiving for the ephesians he treated of our election and adoptions by grace which is the true and proper fountain of man's salvation and because the height of this mystery cannot easily be attained unto he prayeth that they may come to the full knowledge and possession thereof in christ so in one of my videos, I talked about the seven churches of Asia, which is in Turkey. And one of those seven churches is Ephesians. I do highly recommend that you watch that video in your spare time. <clears throat> because there's a lot of things. <clears throat> sorry about this. <clears throat> there's a lot of things that's happening in the news that relates to the entire prophecies dealing with Turkey. And it also relates to the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel and the book of Esther in the Apocrypha. And Esther is also the same um, priest and scribe that's in the book of Nehemiah and Ezra in the Old Testament. But let us go to verse 13 and 14 so you can see the spiritual connection of the Holy Spirit to the blood. <clears throat> For we are made holy 
and acceptable and cleansed by the word and by the spirit, the Holy Spirit. Verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, until, I mean, I'm sorry, unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore, I also, after I, after I heard of your faith in Yahushua HaMashiach and love unto all the saints. Wait a minute. I missed the verse. Let me start over. Forgive me. Verse 13. <clears throat> in whom ye also trust, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believe, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. So what happens is that when you come into the body of Yahushua Hamashah by salvation and baptism, and I do want to mention this, the Holy Spirit baptism will come at the most high appointed time, okay? For me, it happened later in my life. I received water baptism in my late teens, and I received the Holy Spirit baptism in, in my early 30s. It's, and it, it can be different from everyone, okay? There are many signs listed in the book of Mark as well as Acts to let you know if you have received the Holy Spirit baptism. If you have not, do not panic because all we have to do is ask our Father and seek him out in the name of Yahushua Hamasha to receive it. <clears throat> this is the promised gift that is mentioned in verse 13. It's also discussed in Acts chapter 2 and also in the book of Galatians, I believe it's chapter 3. This is the promised gift that Yahushua was talking about, sending to us to um, teach us and to give us understanding of the word until he comes back. So that's what it means about being redeemed. Christ is coming back to, to redeem the church, to redeem the 144, and also to lead the chosen remnant of Israel back into the land, the holy land. <clears throat> so you have three groups of people that he would be dealing with when he comes back, okay, according to his father's orders. Also, he would be coming back to carry out his father's judgment in the earthly realm. I believe you can find that it's either in the book of John or the book of Mark. That talks about that of him giving complete authority to come back to carry out his father's judgment in the earthly realm. And also that can be found in Acts chapter 17, verse 30 through 31. Now let's get back on subject. So you are cleansed and made holy by the word and the Holy Spirit. Now, this is what the Holy Spirit does for you. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit. You are marked in blood okay and i have verses to prove what i'm saying let's go to right now let's look at verse 13 so we are sealed by the holy spirit and because we are marked by the holy spirit that's how he knows who would be redeemed you are marked he can see your spiritual mark you may not be able to see it but he can see it and the angels of heaven also read the book of luke I know Matthew chapter 24, that's what it's talking about. When those angels come back and get their let, the elect is going to be sealed by the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, for more insight on this, let me see what I have here. This is oh, okay. That's the bigger part. For more insight on this, about the Holy Spirit being the blood. When you go to the book of Revelations, chapter seven, it tells you that the Most High has always has has sealed his servants, okay, before he um, hurt the earth and the um before he hurt the earth and the seeds, okay. Read that in your spare time. So those who had the sixteen eleven Bible, when I went to the book of Ezekiel, it is the precept. To Revelation chapter 7. So let's go there now. Ezekiel. So you can see that I'm not just talking out my mouth. Ezekiel chapter 9. Let's see here. Ezekiel chapter 9. 
And you see, I clicked on the page that actually has the fuller copy of the Bible because it would give you the precepts so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, in verse four is the precept to Revelation chapter seven. And you see the um, number four. So let's go down so you can see what I'm talking about is true. So number four, it gives you the meaning of one of those words as Hebrew, Mark and Mark. And the two precepts for that verse in Ezekiel chapter nine, verse four are Revelation 12, seven. I'm sorry, Exodus 12, 12, seven and Revelation seven, verse three. OK. So when I read this precept of Ezekiel chapter nine, verse four, it gave me more insight on how we are marked now. And it reads, and Yahuwah said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abomination that be done in the midst thereof. So in the body of Yahushua Hamashiach, his spiritual temple is marked by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the blood. So let us go to the book of Exodus chapter 12 or 7, because I had to get the father to understand why would it tell me to go to Exodus chapter 12 verse 7 Exodus chapter 12 verse 7 I'm a little bit too far down and they that and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat. So as you can see in the earthly realm, the book of Exodus is a great book to study because what happened in Exodus will happen again, my people. Okay, to give you more understanding about the body of Yahushua HaMashiach. So you see in Exodus chapter 12, my people had to take blood and put it on the doorpost. So when the destroyer, the angel of death, come through, he knew that they were marked and not to touch them. But those who do who did not have the marking of the blood of the lamb on their doorpost, he touched them and took away their firstborn. Well, that's the same thing now that's happening. Those who receive salvation and baptism, as written according to the word will be marked spiritually by the spiritual blood, which is the Holy Spirit. Okay? So in your spare time, read Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4, Exodus chapter 12, verse 7, and Revelation chapter 7, verse 3. So this is my proof to you that in the heavenly realm, we have the Holy Spirit and is represented by the blood in the earthly realm. Now let's go to the book of the lesson because I know what you're already thinking. What she's saying ain't making no sense, but let's see what Christ said. Let's hear him speak something that didn't make no sense even to my, even to my ancestors. Okay. And we're going to the book of John chapter six, and we're going to start at verse 45. It is written in the prophets and they shall be all tore of Yahuwah. Every man that forth that have heard and have learned of Yahuwah cometh unto me. Not that any man has seen the Father, say he which is of Yahuwah, he has seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believe on me have everlasting life. So in order to have everlasting life, my people, you have to believe in Yahushua HaMashiach as being the son of Yahuwah. Let us keep going. Verse 48, I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a, that a man may eat thereof and not die. So he's here he's giving you a kind of representation. For we know the manna was the bread of heaven, but he's about to give you a spiritual message about the manna. Okay, let's keep going. I am the living bread, which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. 
And the bread that I would give is my flesh, which I would give for the life of the world. So we know Yahuwah was, was the word who came down in the earth and was made in flesh. Remember John chapter 1 verse 14. So this is what he's talking about. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I would give is my flesh, which I would give for the life of the world. Let's keep going. The Jews, therefore, strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Now, I'm laughing at this because those who understand Torah know that we cannot eat human flesh. That is against Torah. And we cannot, I, I say that part for last, but we cannot do that. So that's why they was questioning him. What is he talking about? Then Yahushua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Now, wait a minute. You gonna probably say, whoa, what was Christ talking about here? Eating his flesh and drinking his blood? See, they was looking at this carnally. They didn't understand. They didn't understand the spiritual message. Okay, because it's written in the Old Testament that that what the word is life, and that every man would not live by bread alone, but would, but would live by the word. And what I would do in the speech bubble, I'm gonna post that verse so you can read it in the Old Testament. But that's what he was talking about. Let's read. Keep reading. Verse fifty four. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. So this is another key here. How can he dwell in us and I in him? What is the connection? The flesh is the word. And we know the word is Christ. And we know Christ is the word. And the word is salt. And the word is fire. We also know that the blood is the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit who, who connects us to Christ. It is through the Holy Spirit of, of why we become married to Christ. Do you see now the mystery of all these verses I was going through? So you can understand what Christ is talking about here. This is why he said that he's always with us, always, even though he, he is in heaven and sitting by Yahuwah. Because we are spiritually connected to him. Let's keep going. As the living father has sent me, I live by the father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. So what do we eat? my people he's talking about studying and reading the word meditating on it even in the book of josh we are supposed to what to pray and meditate day and night on this word this is our spiritual food let's keep going verse 58 this is that bread which came down from heaven not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead he that eat of this bread shall live forever so he's He's not talking about the physical manner because they ate that physical manner and are dead, our forefathers, the Israelites, okay? But what he's talking about is the spiritual manner, the word. And he is the word. He's the living word that was made in flesh. Mm. Verse 59. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Campanar. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? See, they were trying to understand what is this man talking about? Many of his disciples questioned this. Verse 61. When Yehoshua knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto him, Do it this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? Verse 63. It is the spirit that quicketh them. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So he's giving them this the actual spiritual meaning so they can understand. So we know when they say the spirit quickeneth, 
And that means he brings you back to life. See, we was we was the walking dead. We was blind. We did not understand these heavenly and spiritual things. So the spirits bring us back to life. And through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives us understanding of the word, gives us understanding of the law, which is the covenant. And by having understanding, it would give us life because now we will know how to live holy and acceptable to the Father. Do you see how this is connecting? But if you only trust in your flesh, you are the damn to the eternal death. So he said the words, which is the word out of the whole book, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So this is why when you feel down and out or you, you need a healing, you need to pull that word out. You need to speak it with your tongue because it's life. And when you speak it, it shall come into existence. And all you need is faith as a mustard seed. Let's keep going. Verse 64. But there are some of you that believe not. For Yahushua knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it was given unto him of my father. So I will stop on that point in that chapter, but I do highly recommend that you read that whole chapter to understand what he was talking about. Because there's some great mysteries there. Also, I would like to go to John chapter 3, verse 12. Because it's a short verse I would like to read to you. And what I will do, I'm going to post it in a bubble box. So we won't have to worry about wasting time changing screens. But John chapter 3, verse 12. If I had told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you a heavenly thing? So what Christ is saying there, if you're not understanding these earthly things that he's going over with you, how are you going to understand these heavenly things? That's something to meditate on, my people. So to end this lesson today, I will close out with Hebrews chapter 2. I'm going to read verses um, 14 through 18. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. So we know in Apocrypha, in the wisdom of Solomon, I believe it's chapter 2, verses 23 through 24 or or 22 through um, 24, that when Adam fell and lost his dominion of the earth, it went into Satan. And then through eating the fruit, uh, it brought also death. So Satan had power over death. So through Yahushua HaMashiach, by him being crucified on the cross and defying death by being resurrected from the dead through the power of Yahuwah, he was able to defeat the devil and death. So now all sons and daughters of Adam have a chance to be redeemed and to receive eternal life. But, but you're going to have to choose it. The choice is yours now, my people. So let me read verse 14 again. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is that is the devil. And also for future study, we know that Yahushua can choose to come as anything. If you read the book of Exodus as well as First Chronicles chapter 5 verses um, 1 through 5 or First Chronicles chapter 10 verses 1 through 5, he can come as an angel. He can come as a pillar of cloud or a pillar of fire. He can choose any form that he can come in. Also, if you read one of the hidden books called The Ascension of Isaiah, it will give you more understanding about the different forms that Yahushua can choose to come in. In the Bible, it, it also calls him the witness of the tabernacle or the tabernacle of witness that can be found in the book of Revelation, but also do a word search because also mentioned the Old Testament. He was there, my people, with the children of Israel when they left Egypt and when they was in the wilderness. And he led them also into the land of Canaan under the authority and power of Yahuwah. Verse 15. 
verse 15, and delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on the seed of Abraham. So in other words, he came here in the earthly realm as a man in the flesh. Verse 17, wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to Yahuwah, to make rec reconcil reconciliation for the sins of the people. And I forgot to mention that the word see actually means children, descendants, your your progeny of your lineage. There has been a great deception of what some of my brothers and sisters are preaching about. Look it up. It's in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. But that's another mystery and another lesson for another time, my people. But I just want to let you know that C does mean children and it does include male and female. Verse 18. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempered, he is able to secure them that are tempted. So basically what Christ did, and this is why it's so important to go back and read the gospel. Read the book of um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He set the example. He, he, he provide the greatest example for us to follow. He came in the flesh and he showed us how he was able to defeat the flesh and also how he was able to defeat the devil. In other words, he went through what we are going through in our own bodies. But he set the example for us to follow. OK, any person who's preaching this gospel and not doing as Christ told us to do, you know, you, you would truly know they, they're not sent by him and they're not sent by Yahuwah. OK, so this is why it's so important for you to pray, to meditate and to study this word for yourself. For there are many false prophets and prophetess and a prophet and prophetess can preach. They can prophesy and they can teach. OK. So you would know those who are truly sent by the Most High because they would have the Holy Spirit of Yahuwah upon them. And they would be, be preaching the gospel of Christ. And they would be saying that Yahushua is the son of Yahuwah. They would also say that um, Yahushua was born of a virgin who, who had not had sex and who was not married when he was conceived. And that is um, confirmed in the book of Isaiah when he said that it would be a sign and it has to be a miracle. So this is why his birth is special and why his birth is a sign and a miracle for no angel, no man can copy what the most High did. In other words, no sex took place. No fornication took place. Only divine heavenly powers took place to bring him forth in their earthly realm. That's a mystery that many of my brothers and sisters do not understand. And the prophet Isaiah has confirmed this as well as the book of Luke and the book of Matthew for Mary even confirmed that she is a virgin. She wasn't married when she, when she had, when she had conceived him, she was with her cousin Elizabeth for three months. So by the time she came back home, she was already pregnant with him. Just reread those books and study for yourself and you'll see it. So he set the example for us to follow. So I highly again recommend that you read the gospel and understand what Christ did. Because if you follow Christ's example, you will get into the kingdom of heaven. He received the water baptism. He received the Holy Spirit baptism. He preached the word. He preached the gospel of the kingdom of heaven is at hand to all. I mean, he, he preached it. Even he talked to some of the Gentiles too when he was there. And you can look at the Ceterians. He also gave healings to some of the Gentiles. It's evidence. Okay. And the, that was the final commandment that he gave to the apostles slash disciples. He said what? Preach this gospel to all nations. That's in Mark chapter 16, verses 14 through 16. For it relates to Acts chapter 17, verse 30 through 31. The Most High is giving all men a chance to repent before this final judgment comes to the earth. And there is nothing, my people, you can do to stop it. For the kingdom of Esau must be destroyed and Satan and his angels must also be destroyed. It is coming, my people. So you need, so you need to choose today who kingdom you want to be in. Do you want to be in Esau kingdom and be damned to the eternal lake of fire? Or do you want to be in Jacob kingdom, which is the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of uh, eternal life? which is the kingdom where the new heaven and new earth will be. 
And the only way you can get in this kingdom, you must be born again. You must receive salvation and baptism. Definitely read Acts chapter 8. But where there's a way, there's a will. Find someone that, that you trust who believe like you. You can get a little tub. Have, you know, you sit halfway and then have the person to dip your other half in. The, the, have the person dip the other half of your body in the water. It's a, it's, a, it's a way to do this. You don't have to go to no church or no ordained person. You need to find a believer who has been anointed by the Holy Spirit. The same way Christ was anointed. Read the book of Luke. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit before he preached the word. That is the oil that is mentioned in Matthew when it talks about the 10 virgin. The oil is the Holy Spirit. So I'm not going to run my mouth on anything else. I want to try to keep this lesson straight to the point. I love all of you. And I want you to get this warning out to all nations about this judgment that's coming. And to tell them about salvation as written in Romans chapter 10, verse 8 through 13, and about the baptism. Read Mark chapter 16, verse 14 through 16, Acts chapter 2, chapter 8, chapter 11, and chapter 19. And most importantly, John chapter 3, verse, I think it's 1 through 12 or 1 through 13. And I love you all. And enjoy your Shabbat. Enjoy your rest. For soon we, we all shall receive eternal rest who are in the body of Yahushua Hamashiach. Shalom.